Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to learn about the basics of grammar and all of the tenses in the English language. For each tense, I will show you the form, its different uses, and I'll share with you the example sentences to help you fully understand. So if you are ready, let's begin. So before we get into the lesson, here is a chart showing all of the tenses. There are three times present, past, and future, and four aspects, simple, continuous, perfect, and perfect continuous. The times and the aspects combine to make all of the 12 tenses in English. The present time and the simple aspect makes the present simple tense. Then we have uh, the present continuous, present perfect, and then present perfect continuous. In the same way, we can make tenses with the past and the future times as well. We are going to discuss all of these in this lesson. So let's begin with the first tense the present simple. We make the simple present tense with the subject like I, you, we, they, he, she, or it, and the verb in the present or the we one form. For example, I drink coffee every morning. Kathy works as a teacher. Notice that, that in sentence number two, we have works with an S. In the present tense, if the subject is I, you, we, or they, we use a verb without S. That is, that's why I drink. If the subject is he, she, or it, we add S to the verb. Kathy is a female name. It's like saying she. So we have said Kathy works. Now the first sentence here talks about a habit or a routine, something that I do regularly. The second sentence is a fact. Kathy works as a teacher, is a fact about her life. These are the two main uses of the present simple tense. Here are the few more examples and habits of habits and routines like Sean goes to the beach on Sundays. Children often play video games after school. And here are some more facts like you sing very well. It, it is the fact about someone's ability. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Notice that this last sentence is a fact about, about uh, water. So facts could be about people or they could be about things in, in the world. So that is the present simple tense. The next tense is the present continuous tense. We make the present continuous tense with the subject plus am, is, are, plus verb in the continuous form, ing form. We say I am, he, she, it, is, you, we, they, are. For example, I'm drinking coffee right now. This sentence shows the first use of the present continuous to talk about actions happening now at the time of speaking. This is this not a general statement. It's not about my coffee drinking habit. It's about what is happening at this moment and time. I am drinking coffee. Here are two more examples. We are having breakfast. It is raining outside. These sentences also express what is happening now. This is the first use of the present continuous tense. The second use uh, 
of it is to talk about the temporary activities. We have talked talked about uh, we have talked about actions happening now and the temporary activities. Now, if we go to the next slide, we'll see that we are talking about the temporary activities, like the first sentence, Arun is learning to play guitar. Arun is taking the guitar lessons maybe twice a week, so he is in the practice, all the process of learning to play the instrument. A couple more examples are for you. I'm watching a really interesting TV series at the moment. My sister is staying with us for a couple of weeks. The third use of the present continuous is to describe the changes that are taking place or happening now. English lessons are new to or becoming very popular. These days, it means that the popularity of English lessons on YouTube is increasing. Here are some more examples. The price of crude oil is falling rapidly. Scientists say that the earth is getting warmer. So remember that the present continuous tense is used to talk about actions happening now, temporary activities and changes that are taking place. All right, so we have discussed the present simple and the present continuous tense. Let's now talk about the past simple and the past continuous. Past simple first. We make the past simple tense with the subject and a verb in the past with the V2 form. This tense is used to talk about completed actions in the past. For example, I played soccer with my friends last Saturday. Karen gave us a present for our wedding anniversary. We, the verb in the first sentence is play. We make the past form by adding ed to it. We do do the same for most of the verbs, but some verbs have special past forms. You see that insert sentence number two, gave. This is the past tense of the verb give. We say give, gave, given. Given is the past participle or the V3 form. These types of verbs are called irregular verbs. There are no rules for making past forms with them. So you have to memorize them, memorize the correct forms. You, say, you, you will see some examples on the screens, but there are many more in English. Here are some more past simple sentences. We received the package this morning. My grandfather built this house in 1968. Antonio lived in Malaysia for five years. Okay, now let's move on and talk about the past continuous tense. Here's a sentence first. I was having dinner with my family when the doorbell rang. We're going to put the sentence on the timeline. That side is the past, in the middle is the now, and over on that side is the future. Our sentence says, I was having dinner with my family. This shows unfinished, ongoing action in the past. So I was in the middle of having dinner and something happened. The doorbell rang. So I had to put down my spoon and fork and get up from my table and go and see who it was. So the past continuous tense talks about an unfinished, ongoing action in the past. And normally, we also mention another finished action that interrupted. We make this tense with a subject plus was, a were, plus a verb and ing form. 
we say was for the subject I, he, she, it, and were for you, we, they. If we mention a finished action that interrupted the continuous action, it is in the past simple form. Subject plus 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 tense verb, like the doorbell rang. Here are a few more sentences for you. It was raining when Priya left for work, so she had to take an umbrella for her. The power went out. The power went out while the children were studying. The children were studying and then the power went out. The single finished acts and the power went out is mentioned over here. While we were waiting at the bus stop, we see a car accident. Yes, we saw a car accident. That's that was that was for the past continuous tense and the timeline shows that we were waiting at the bus stop and now what happened we saw a car accident and nothing happened everyone was safe so but before we move on to the next tense let's do a quick comparison of the four tenses that we have looked at so far um, I drink coffee every morning is in the present simple tense. As you can see on the timeline now, this tense expresses a habit or a routine, something that happens regularly. I'm drinking coffee right now is in the present continuous tense. It means that I am doing this action, drinking coffee at this moment. I drank coffee yesterday expresses a finished action in the past. That coffee is gone now. This sentence is in the past, simple tense. And in the last sentence, I was drinking coffee this morning when I got a phone call from my boss. We see two actions. One is in unfinished continuous action. I was drinking coffee that's a past continuous form. And in, in the middle of that, something happened. I got a phone call from my boss. That is a past simple dance form. So my boss said, we need you at the office. It's important, get here right now. And I had to throw out my coffee and rush to work. Anyway, let's move on. We are not going to look at the present perfect tense. We make the present perfect with the subject plus have or has plus verb in the past participle or the V3 form. We say have if the subject is I, you, we, or they, and has at the subject is he, she, or it. For example, I have taught English to many students in my career. Actually, Ashley has visited Fr France four times. We have seen two movies this week. The present perfect tense has two main uses. These sentences show the first use to talk about experiences. Sentence number one is about my experience in my teaching career. Of course, I'm still a teacher so my career is not finished and it is continuing. So we can say, I have taught English to many students in my career, but that's not necessary. It's, it's understood already. Similarly, Ashley has visited France four times in her life. So the time period here is Ashley's life, which is still continuing. And the third sentence, the time period is this week. Maybe today is Wednesday. So this week is not finished. So we might see another two movies before the end of this week. So in these sentences, the time period is continuing or ongoing. My career, Ashley's life and this week. But if the time period is finished, 
we just use the past simple tense. I taught many students when I was the teacher. In this sentence, my career is over. It means that I'm not a teacher now. I was for some time. During that time, I taught many students. But then I quit that line of work and became a pop singer maybe. Ashley has visited France four times in her life. Or maybe I could say that Ashley, Ashley visited Ashley visited France in 2015. 2015 is in the past. Again, we saw two movies last week. Again, last week is gone. So this is the first use of the present perfect to discuss experiences in continuing or ongoing time periods. The second use is to talk about recent action or events. For example, I have finished my homework. You can imagine a kid saying this to her mom. Well, when did she finish her homework? Maybe five minutes or 10 minutes, but that's not important. The important thing is the completion of the homework. You see this on the timeline now, the girl finished her homework just a few minutes ago, but she is not saying specific time because it's not necessary. That's why there is a question mark on the timeline, no mention of the time. Here is another sentence, Arthur has lost his glasses. We don't say when, because the important thing is that now Arthur does not have his glasses. One more example, the police have arrested a young man in connection with the robbery. So there was a robbery in the neighborhood recently and now the police have a young suspect in custody. The exact time of the arrest is not important. In all of these sentences, if you want to mention the specific time, you should use a past simple tense. I finished my homework at 6.30 p.m. Arthur lost his glasses at the party. The party was maybe last weekend, so this is all old news. The police arrested a young man last night in connection with the robbery. So remember, so there are two main uses of the present perfect tense to talk about experiences and to talk about recent events. Okay, now moving forward. Present perfect continuous, let's move to the Next tense, yes, here it is. So we make the present perfect continuous tense with a subject plus have or has been plus a verb in continuous form or ing form. Um, if the subject is I, you, we, or they, we use have. If the subject is he, she, it, we use has. has. For example, I've been waiting to see the doctor for two hours. You can imagine this lady saying that. So it means that, that she came to the clinic maybe at five o'clock and now it's seven o'clock. She started waiting at five. Two hours have now passed and she is still waiting. So the present perfect continuous tense talks about an action that started in the past still and it's still continuing. In the sentence, we can also say, I have been waiting to since 5 p.m. The difference between for and since is that for talks about the amount of the time, like two hours. Since is used to mention the, the starting point of the action, like 5 p.m. Here is another sentence. 
He has been playing tennis since he was a child. He started, he started when he was little, maybe when he was five years old, and he's still playing tennis. He, he like, let's say he's 25 now, he has been playing tennis for 20 years. A few more examples are for you. She has been learning English for eight months or since last October. We have been living in this town for a very long time or since 1980. It has been raining all morning or since 4 a.m. Now here, the duration is all now. Like in fixed phrases, all morning, all week, all day, etc. we don't use for. But you can say since 4 a.m. if you want to mention a starting point. I want to alert you to a common mistake here. If you say, I am waiting to see the doctor for two hours, he is playing tennis since he was a child. Those are not correct. You can say right now, I'm waiting to see the doctor or he is playing tennis. But when you mention the amount of time, like two hours, or when you mention the starting point, like since he was a child, you must use the present perfect continuous sense. This is true with the other sentences here as well. So keep this point in your mind. All right. So this is the present perfect continuous tense. Let's now move on to the next tense. That's it is a past perfect tense. Before we talk about this tense, take a look at this past simple tense sentence. When we got to the theater, the movie started. There are two past actions here. Got to the theater, which means that we arrived there and the movie started. You can see that in the timeline that we got to the theater first, then, then right after that, the movie started playing. But what about this sentence? When we got to the theater, the movie had started. That means the movie started before we got to the theater. So the movie started first, then we arrived. This is the past perfect tense. We make it with a subject plus had plus a verb in a past participle of we3 form. When we have two actions in the past, we use the past perfect to clearly show which action happened first. Here is another, another example for, I was sick because I had eaten too much the previous night. Two actions, I was sick and I had eaten too much the previous night. Which happened first, I had eaten too much food and then after the next day I was sick. Next example, the girl looked very familiar. I had seen her somewhere before. First, I had seen her somewhere before, maybe a few years before. So, so she looked very familiar to me. Joel rushed to his boss's office, but she had gone home already. So she, meaning the boss, had gone home already when Joel rushed to see, his, see her boss, so she was not there. As you can see, the past perfect tense is really easy. Just remember that when we have two past actions, we use the past perfect if we want to clearly indicate which happened first. We do, we do this to avoid confusion in the order of, of our events. All right, let's turn to our next slide. This is the past perfect continuous. This tense is just like the past perfect symbol. It's a, except for the pa first past action is continuous. For example, I felt really tired because I had been driving all day. 
So you know that I felt tired at some point in the past. And that was because before that I had been driving that entire day. So the earlier past action was a continuous one. We make this tense with the subject plus had been plus verb in the continuous or ing form. Here is another sentence. She had been waiting for two hours when the doctor finally arrived. Remember that lady who was waiting for the doctor? Well, the doctor came, so her wait ended. But before that point, she had been waiting for two hours. Here, the past perfect continuous form comes first in the sentence, but that's okay. Some more examples for you. The ground was wet because it had been raining. It had been raining first, and so the ground was wet. When he quit, next sentence is, when he quit his job at the factory, he had been working there for 12 years. So remember, so the past perfect continuous tense is used to talk about the continuous action in the past before another finished action. Time to review. Uh, we are going to go do uh, the quick comparison for the four perfect tenses we have looked at so far. I have washed the dishes is in the present perfect tense. It focuses on the completion of the action and doesn't mention the action exact time. But you understand that I finished washing the dishes maybe just a few minutes ago. I have been washing the dishes for half an hour ago is in the present perfect continuous tense. It means that I have not finished washing, the, washing them yet. I started half an hour ago and I'm still doing it. When I left for work, I had washed the dishes. Here, I had washed the dishes is in the past perfect tense. It means that first I finished washing them and, and after that I left for work. When the phone rang, I had been washing the dishes for half an hour. So the phone rang at some point in the past, half an hour before that, I started washing the dishes and I was still doing that when the phone rang. So I stopped, wiped my hands dry, and then I went to answer the phone. All right, now, now we move on to talk about the future. So now we are going to talk about future simple tense. Future simple tense, the slide is in front of you that's going to, uh, it talks about the plans and intentions. Subject plus am, is, are going to plus verb, that is the base. So if we look at the first sentence, we, are, we use going to, to express the plans and intentions. We make this form with the subject plus am plus are, and then going to plus a verb in its base form. For example, we are going to buy a car. That means that we have a plan to buy a car soon. I'm going to start exercising regularly. Rahul is going to take a vacation from work. Now, if it is more than a plan, 
if we have made the arrangements, then we use the present in continuous. This is the tense you know already. When we use it to talk about the future, it is stronger than going to. For example, am I having lunch with my parents on Saturday? So my parents are and I have a plan to do that, but also we have agreed upon the time and the place it's fixed. Here is another, another example for you. We are flying to Mumbai the day after tomorrow. So we have, we have purchased the flight tickets and now our trip is confirmed. Josh is giving a presentation to the board of directors on the 10th. <clears throat> on the 10th means on the 10th of this month. This is also a fixed arrangement. Now you might be asking, so what's the difference be really between going to and the present continuous? Well, here is the situation to help you understand. I'm going to see the dentist sometime next week. I'm laughing because, because of the picture. Okay, so uh, do I have a plan to see the dentist? Yes, but do I know and exactly what day? No, I haven't booked an appointment yet. But if I say I'm seeing the dentist tomorrow afternoon, that is confirmed. I have an, an appointment. One more example for you. We are going to get married this year. Is this, is the date fixed? No, it's a plan. We are getting married on April 21st. Is the date fixed? Yes, this is an arrangement. So that's the difference between going to and the present continuous. But what about will? Let's talk about that now. Will is used to express the three things. Instant decisions, that is the decisions that we make at certain points, at the point of speaking, offers and promises. We make this form with the subject plus will plus verb in its base form. At a restaurant, a waiter is asking me, may I take your order? And you say, yeah, or I say, yes, I will have the burger and fries combo, please. This is an instant decision. You didn't plan two weeks ago that to eat this food at this restaurant on this day. You just made the decision now. Here's another example. Someone says, the phone is ringing and you say, I will get it. You just decided to answer the phone. The next two examples show will used to make offers. These files are really heavy. I'll, I will help you with them. So I'm offering to help this person to carry the files. That person can, can say, okay, thank you, or, or no thanks, I can do it myself. Similarly, it's hard to get a cab at this hour. I'll give you a ride home. You might say that to a colleague of yours when leaving work late. Your colleague might uh, accept or might politely decline your offer. And here is Will used to make promises. Can you lend me $200? I'll pay you back next week. Thank you for your email. We'll respond within two business days. So far, we have talked about expressing plans and intentions with going to fixed arrangements with the present continuous and the three uses of will. Instant decisions, offers and promises. But there is one more future function that you need to know about, and that is making predictions. To make predictions or guesses about the future, we can use both will and going to. These two forms are interchangeable for making predictions in many situations. 
meaning that you can choose whichever one you want. But there is a slight difference. We normally use will to make predictions based on our knowledge or on our own personal experiences. I think Spain will win the 2018 World Cup. They've been playing well recently. So based on that knowledge, I think that they will win the World Cup. You should watch Interstellar. I'm sure you will love it. I know that you like science fiction films, so I'm confident that you will like this one too. We use going to when we make predictions based on something in the present, something we can see now. So we are so sure. Look at the sky. It is going to rain soon. We can see a lot of black clouds, so it's definitely going to rain in a few minutes. Mom is going to be really happy when she sees my grades. So this kid has done really well on his exams. He has his report card in hand and he knows for sure that his mother is going to be very happy when she is going to see that. So remember this difference in making predictions with will and going to. We have covered a lot of information about the future simple tense. Let's do a quick recap or review. We use going to, to talk about plans and intentions. We are going to buy a car. We use the present continuous to talk about fixed arrangements. I'm having lunch with my parents on Saturday. We use will for three main purposes to express instant decisions. I'll have the burger and fries combo, please. To make offers, I will help you with those files and to make promises. Can you lend me 200 or $2,000? I'll pay you back next week. We use both will and going to, to make predictions. I think Spain, Spain will win the 2018 World Cup knowledge. It is, here I would like to add one very important point. If a prediction is based upon our opinions, knowledge or experience, we use will. I think Spain will win the 2018 World Cup. If a prediction is based on something we can see right now, then we use going to. Look at the sky. It's going to rain soon. All right, let's now move on to the next tense that is the future continuous. We make the future continuous tense with the subject plus will be plus verb in continuous form, ing form. For example, at 11 a.m. tomorrow, I'll be driving to Portland. So tomorrow at nine in the morning, I'm going to start to driving to Portland. It will take me many hours to get there, but at 11 o'clock, I will be doing this activity, driving. The future continuous tense expresses an action that will be ongoing, that will be in progress, that will be in progress for some time in future. Here is another example. You can read them on the slides. Mm -hmm. So here we are going to talk about the future continuous tense. The form of it includes the subject plus will be plus work with ing form. The future continuous tense maybe talk, can talk about the fixed or routine events. Like in the first example, I will be staying at the Hilton Hotel in Portland. That is the fixed thought in your mind or your plan that you are going to do in future. I am staying at the Hilton Hotel in Portland. I am going to stay at the Hilton Hotel in the Portland, in Portland. Now the next sentence, 
I'm going to the cafeteria. Do you want me to bring a coffee? You are working with your colleague. And as you are heading towards the cafeteria, you are asking your colleague that if he or she wants the cup of coffee. But the other person says, thanks, but don't bother. I'll, I'll be going there in a little while myself. This is the future perfect continuous tense. Here, someone is saying that by August, Aaron will, be, will have saved $600. It means that up till August, Aaron will be having few months. And from this time, he is going to start saving money, maybe $200 per month. And then he is going to up till August, he is going to save $600. The future perfect, future perfect continuous tense describes all the completed actions that are going to do, that you are going to do in the future. The form consists of subject plus will have plus verb past participle V3 form. By August, Aaron will have saved $600. It means that the action took place in the past and it's continuing and he has planned that up till August, he is going to save $600. Future perfect continuous, that is that it describes an ongoing action in the future with the time duration. The form consists of subject plus will have been plus verb with an ing form. By August, Aaron will have been saving money for six months. Coming back to the last slide, that is future perfect continuous. The form con consists of subject plus will have plus verb, past participle with the V3, form. The future perfect always mentions completed actions in the future. By 5 p.m. we will have painted the living room. Me and my husband might have decided okay, we are going to paint the room. So a day before that we are planning okay, in the morning we'll get up at 7 and then we are going to paint the room after taking breaks and we have that definite plan in our mind that when we will be doing the certain actions that we have already planned, then by 5 p.m. we will have painted the living room. For future perfect continuous, ongoing action in the future with duration, which shows that the form shows that subject with will have been with verb and ing form. By 5 p.m. we will have been painting. It means that the living room for 10, for 10 hours we will be painting and it's, it is showing that we have started off the action uh, with the continuation of 10 hours and after completion, we, we are pretty sure that till 5 p.m. we will be free. So this is all about the tenses that we have learned today. And uh, in continuation with these tenses, I will be posting few of the exercises as well, which will help you in reviewing all these tenses that we have learned. Thank you for your time.